At the Burnabout, right? His presentation was crazy. 80,000 people. They had a whole show. He gave a speech. He did his medical. He signed his contract. He did a press conference. It was a glorious day. Now, for me, where I live, this happened at 6 a.m. for me. I wanted to do a watch along for it, um, but I couldn't, right? Like, I, there was no way in hell I was going to be waking up in time to do a 6 a.m. stream because I got work, right? You know, like most people have work throughout the day. But I just wanted to let you guys know that it is a great day to support Real Madrid. Yo, the longest transfer saga in world football history is finally over. And the reason why I use this picture, right? There are so many great pictures from today of Mbappe and everything that was going on. But I got to throw this pick in here because my man Florentino Perez is right there. The greatest club president that this sport will ever see. He is more important than any player at the club. And I, I wish this man good health and a thousand more years of life. Because whenever he has to step down from presidency, I don't know how you can replace a man like Florentino Perez. I love this guy almost as much as I love my family. I'm telling you, he, he's fantastic, phenomenal. There's not one complaint that I have about anything with this guy. The way that he does business, the way that he's able to keep the standards high, the way that he's able to bring in all these players and still maintain the levels, right? Barcelona, they tried to sign big name players, right? They don't want to admit to it. But we didn't forget about Coutinho, 130 million. Griezmann, 130 million. Oh, wait, what about Uzma Dembele? About 100, what, 20, 140 M's? We didn't forget. They want you to forget. They want you to believe that they just only care about building their academy and bringing up players that way, which they do somewhat. But Barca also spend money. Nobody talks about it, though. You want to know why? Because it flops. They don't know how to do business like how Florentino Perez does. And I really feel bad for the guy that has to come in and be our next president because you're not going to live up to the standards that this man has set. It's fucking crazy, bro. It's insane. And it's over now. Mbappe is officially here. He's saying the right things. He seems humble. He knows that this is not his team. This is not PSG. You're not the main guy here. You're joining Vinny's team. Vinny's the number seven. Vinny is our left winger. Everything that I saw today and heard from Mbappe, I loved it. He's talking about, I'll play wherever the coach wants me to. I'll adapt. That's what the fuck I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm talking about. PSG, hold that. You bums. If I was a fan of that club, I'd be outside the Parc de Prince right now, rioting. Because how do you lose Mbappe for nothing? How do you lose a generational player in his mid-20s that's French as well? One of the most valuable players in this sport for nothing. That's just bad business. I think PSG, you got to realize, you, you, you guys just are not that club. You play in the McDonald's League One. Like, what the fuck are we talking about here, bro? You guys tried to stop destiny. I don't even know what their president's name is. What is it? Uh... Calfani or whatever, you're a bum. Bad business, you're too emotional. You got to realize that when you're talking to Florentino Perez, your player's already gone. Don't try and stop it. Now, Mbappe's coming in, wearing the number nine, doing what CR7 did in his first season when seven wasn't available. He took the nine. I think Mbappe going to rock nine for this season. Modric, this is his possible last season with us. I think he's gone. And Bobby gets to 10. And I know people do have some concerns about, you know, just how are him, Vinny, and Rodrigo going to work? It's going to work. This is why you have a Carlo Ancelotti, arguably the best manager of all time, with this team. Because he's going to get these guys playing in a very fluid system. I remember when all the reports a few months ago were saying, oh, Vinicius and Rodrigo, they may be looking to move and leave because of Mbappe's arrival. Well, Mbappe already shut down that bullshit. He said, yo, Vinny texted me and told me that he wants me to come months ago. He said, come to Madrid so we could play together. 
all the players are reaching out to him already. But because this team is so good, and they haven't proven anything yet. But on paper, it's just so fantastic that, yeah, they would like to see us split apart. They'd like Vinny to go to Man United, PSG. I saw those rumors. Rodrigo getting linked to Man City. It's going to work. We're in seven competitions next season. If we go deep in all of them, Real Madrid could end up playing oh, like maybe 70 games. That's a lot of games. Trust me, there's room for everybody. There's going to be enough games, enough minutes for all the men them. And I expect Madrid to go deep in every competition. Every single one. Now, my unrealistic expectations is to win all seven. But I know that's not how it works. I think you got to win. I, I think we, we got to do the, the treble minimum. And we did a treble last season, but not the treble because we didn't win Copa del Rey. La Liga, Spanish Super Cup, Champions League. That is a form of a treble. That's three major trophies. But it doesn't count as the treble because no Copa del Rey. Fair enough. Next season, we better win that shit. And Mbappe has a lot of pressure on his shoulders right now. I'm going to tell you this right now. Because Madrid has proven that they don't need you. You need Madrid. They just won the Champions League. You're joining the best team in the world already. It's not like we're going through a rebuild. It's not like we're dirt and he's come to pick us up from, like, off the floor. No. So, again, keep that humble attitude. Play where you're told. Score a lot of fucking goals. Win some trophies. And we're going to be happy. That's all you asked for, right? But, as I said, he's saying the right things, man. I think Mbappe next season, my expectations, bro, I think he got to get at least 45 GA. Minimum. I I'm expecting big numbers from him. Now, I think, you know, I could definitely see him starting off a little slow, right? Because when you have to learn how to play in this team, right, the front three is going to have to learn to gel together. Same thing with the midfield, because now Jude is going to go back to being a box-to-box -box eight. Jude is not bagging all those goals that he did last season, this upcoming season. Edric and Mbappe are here. We now have strikers up front. Last season, we didn't have a striker. Jose Lu was there, but he's more of a rotational bench option. So, it's going to be a little different next season. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I can definitely see him starting off a little slow, right? I don't think he's gonna, just going to hit the ground running, bagging a hat trick in the first two weeks. No. But I think once that chemistry clicks between Vinny, Rodrigo, and Mbappe, it's going to be so fluid. It's, it's going to be no way to defend them. There's, there's going to be times. So here's how I honestly think they'll start. I think Vinny starts on the left, Mbappe down the middle, Rodrigo on the right. But we saw it last season with Rodrigo and Vinny. Even though they'd start on their separate wings, they would switch because they had that chemistry. And Mbappe just has to learn how to play with them. And it doesn't matter where he starts the game. Sometimes he will get the ball on that left wing. Sometimes he might get it on the right. Sometimes Vinny might receive it down the middle. Sometimes Vinny might get it on the right. Rodrigo might receive the ball on the left. Or he might receive it down the middle. It just depends on how the game is going. They got to build up that chemistry. That's why when people were talking about, oh, maybe Madrid should go bring in Xabi Alonso. I said no. I didn't win Xabi Alonso. First off, I think Carlo Ancelotti should be allowed to stay. As long as he wants. As long as he keeps doing what he's doing, I'm not forcing him out. If I'm Madrid, I'd want to extend Carlo again. He only has one year left on his deal. But I told people, no, you can't have a team like this and then go bring in a Xabi Alonso. I think what he did with Leverkusen was fantastic. Invincible season in the Bundesliga. Won them their first title, right? Won them a domestic double. Fair enough. Great season. But at Leverkusen, there's no pressure. There's no expectations to win. And even though Xabi Alonso is a player that's very well known, was a good player, also played for Madrid, and the players would respect him, you still got to manage a locker room with really big personalities. I just think Carlo Ancelotti is the man for this job. Now, if Xabi Alonso goes out there again this season and cooks, then we'll talk. But I'd like to see him prove it again one more season before I just give him the Madrid job. But yeah, man, yo, today was a really, really good day. Um, you know, just want to kind of talk about Mbappe 
getting presented at the burnabout. 80,000 people. Are you mad? And by, by the way, do people in Madrid not work jobs? How the hell are 80,000 people able to attend a presentation at 12 p.m.? 80,000 people took off from work? The economy today must have shut down. There must have been no business going on in, in the city. 80,000 people in that stadium on a Tuesday at 12 p.m. their time. What? That's kind of crazy, bro. But let's get in the comment section, though, man. What are you guys saying? Let me know what you think about Mbappe coming to Real Madrid. What are your expectations for next season for him, for the team? Because last season was fantastic. I, and I'm expecting the same next. 